All right, guys, good to War 32 here. Check it out. So, uh, yeah, finished up with the uh, USPSA multi-gun nationals down there, and uh, I myself was team train wreck all by myself. That was the locomotive. I was the cars and the caboose, all in one. I'm not here to talk to you about that. we got a video coming out with about seven stages of pure embarrassment that I'm going to share with you probably tomorrow morning. But uh, anyway, hot on topic right now is this uh, letter from Congressman Matt Getz calls on the ATF to cease plans restricting arm brace usage. Now this kind of goes in hand in hand with a couple videos that I have done as of late talking about, well, let's see, uh, these unknown rules. These, they're secret. They, they made them a rule but didn't tell anybody. They established them just off of a whim. Uh, say for instance, length of pull. The 13 and a half inches from the face of the trigger to the end of the brace you have to measure it to the end of the brace but when you measure the overall length of a firearm uh, to become a uh, firearm versus a pistol or a rifle you have to measure it without the brace there's so many unwritten rules and i think this is one of the cool things that what matt gets love this guy let me say it again love this guy uh what he's trying to force them to kind of come out with what are you establishing these things on? Because I guess one of the things that the ATF is trying to do right now is they're trying to establish that there's one specific model of a brace that they are going to secretly make it, well, I don't know, can you make it illegal? No, but they can make a ruling on it that, well, I don't know. You tell me. But what they're doing is they're using these unwritten and secret decisions to prosecute people, and that's where the danger of what the ATF is doing now. And, you know, A.G. Barr, kind of like the guy and the way, way he uh, just stuffs Democrats and the way he's going after things, but he is ultimately the head law enforcement agent in this country. And uh, what is it? What's her name? Regina Lombardo. And, and, and what he did was he wrote a letter to them asking them three specific questions. I'm going to make those. I haven't watched any of the other videos. Okay, I didn't want to watch those. These, these, this is my video. Okay, so and I want it to be specific to that. Uh, so Getz and his colleagues posed three specific questions to the Attorney General and the Acting Director. What specific criteria does the ATF use to determine whether a firearm is designed and intended to be fired from the shoulder? Well, that's pretty easy. It's got a stock. Uh, kind of opens up the discussion here, like keep it <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. We want to keep these things quiet. So it's kind of drawn back like, okay, I get it, but you know, hey, man. But we got to get a determination, uh, either yay or nay, on what their specific guidelines are. And they don't have any. What specific ATF publications are available to Americans to determine whether their firearm is designed and intended to be fired from the shoulder? Uh, there are none. It's just basically you got to look it up on YouTube sometimes. You got to figure it out. What's going on here? You go, KB, what's the law? I had a gentleman the other day ask me, he goes, can I carry my uh, AR pistol with an SBA 3 brace and then have a 16 inch upper? Yes, you can. <laughs> you just can't, don't put a stock on it. Okay, so anyway, how many firearms with the fixed arm braces have been evaluated by the Firearms and Ammunition Technology Division in support of other law enforcement agencies or criminal prosecutions? Uh, this, practice, this practice not only burdens the Second Amendment rights of the law-abiding citizens, but has recently been used by the ATF to stifle innovation within the firearms industry and prosecute unwitting firearm owners. And that's the danger of it. Now, this I'm finding here is from gets.house.gov, media hot takes press, gets calls ATFC's plans restricting. I'll put the link down below. Hopefully YouTube won't kill my channel. But there is the full letter. And part of it is because of that, like certain things, like the 13 and a half inch uh, vertical grip, Versus a 90 degree angle grip, or you can have a vertical grip if it's over 26 inches in length. Uh, but the 26 inches in length can't include a law folder. There's just all kinds of stuff. And that's why a lot of times you see the guys on uh, YouTube, there are so many conflicting items out there. Uh, what is this? What is that? And, you know, sometimes we have to come back and go, well, I said that, but it's actually this. It's crazy. What constitutes an SBR? The minute you put a vertical grip on it, anything under 26 inches is an SBR. If it's 26 inches, it cannot include the folding law folder. 
a lot of crazy stuff out there, but this is what is, they're creating a very confusing industry for us all. But I'm scared that this is gonna raise questions. They're gonna go, okay, you can have a brace, uh, but you can't shoulder it. Uh, you can have a brace, but uh, there's, there's a, some shit's gonna come down. I just know it. But anyway, I thought this was important enough. I saw all kinds of crazy stuff uh, going on to uh, that I had to make a video on this. I'm going to probably get more involved in the political stuff, guys. It's just been a nightmare out there with the things that are going on these days. I mean, literally, a nightmare. Uh, I know that I have several neighbors who have employed my services in teaching them uh, the ways and means of handling a pistol, and uh, I've taken them to the range, and we've had a lot of fun. And a little bitty lady, she goes, 38 Special, she shot that. She goes, you got anything bigger? I'm like, woo. Okay, and finally, Matt Gass says, we strongly urge ATF to cease taking any actions and reconsider or rescind any secret determinations, secret determinations, those are the key words, which call into question the legality of firearms owned by millions of law-abiding Americans. Thank you for your attention to this matter. And on top of that, Neil P. Dunn, uh, MD, Member of Congress, or uh, Bill Posey, Gregory Stube, Ted Yo Hoy, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine, uh, John Rutherford, and Daniel Webster. And they CC'd the Honorable Jeffrey Rosen, Deputy Attorney General. So anyway, pretty cool stuff there. And uh, I really, I like aggressive politicians, particularly the ones that are on our Second Amendment side. And in this, this particular uh, website, or this uh, webpage, it's in there, we cannot sit back on our laurels any point in time to uh, not fight for our Second Amendment rights. It's Boy 32 If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Support red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. Freedom is not free. I'm out of here. Y'all be good.